may know, I started an organization about 43 years ago called Life Extension. We've since grown to the largest anti-aging medical group in the world. And back in 2016, we had our first RADFest and about a thousand people attended. It was an incredible event. We've had them every single year. And last year we had, again, about a thousand enthusiastic people who did not want to age. They wanted to find ways to reverse their aging process. But what a lot of people don't realize is the ancillary benefits when a thousand people get together in one room and learn that there are scientific methods to intervene into the aging process. This may be a coincidence, but two days after RADFest ended last year, an announcement was made about a $25 million donation, $25 million donation to the University of Miami to do stem cell research. And it's events like RADFest that motivate wealthy people to put up money to support biological research aimed at reversing aging in people. And this includes the federal government. One month after last year's RADFest, the National Institutes of Health agreed to fund $23 million to study pet dogs, not pet, cage dogs, pet dogs, to ascertain if certain interventions could enable dogs to live a lot longer. And in this case, uh, $23 million to study 10,000 dogs, 500 of those dogs will get rapamycin, and they're going to see how much longer the rapamycin dogs live compared to the ones who don't get rapamycin. And the media, they're giving us continuing favorable coverage about our rebellion against aging and death. And if we didn't have these annual RADFest events where a lot of media attends, they wouldn't realize there's a lot of people out there who want to live a lot longer than what nature has in store for us. Now, I gave a talk at an Universal Conference in Palm Beach early December. A lot of people were there, including Liz Parrish and Bill Andrews, Jesse Ventura, a lot of people you may know. And I thought it was a good turnout. Over 300 people turned out for this event. But Newt Gingrich was there. And one month later, Newt Gingrich writes an article about age reversal about enabling people to grow younger, and it got into Fox News where millions of people read about it. So by us getting together and having these conferences, we inspire others to put on conferences, others to talk about it. And as a result, we're seeing some incredible, incredible advances. National Institutes of Health donated $68 million to a study that's gonna identify why do people live a long time. Some people live for an average of 80 years, but some make it to 100, and their whole group of people that they're around lived age 100. NIH is determined to find out why those people are living to age 100 and beyond so that we can all achieve those kind of long-term goals. Now, January this year, brand new magazine called IM, that stands for Immortalist Magazine, was launched by longtime supporter Ira Pastor. And there's a website there where you can subscribe to this magazine if you'd like. And same thing in January 2020, a book on immortality called Immortality Incorporated talks about what the billionaires in Silicon Valley are doing to fund research aimed at disrupting death. Their objective is to find a cure for biological aging so that they can find a way to live for indefinite periods of time. We're very grateful for that kind of research being done. And the author of the book, Chip Walter, he's gonna be speaking at this year's RADFest. So we're gonna to get to hear some inside stories about what's going on with the Silicon Valley billionaires and the many research projects that they're funding right now. And again, when a book is written, when conferences are held, Held, the media pays attention. CNBC did a very nice story in February about the various projects going on right now to defeat biological aging. It's absolutely incredible the amount of favorable media coverage that's occurring because of the good work that's being done at RADFest and the many, many other organizations. Now, back in 2015, the FDA approved the first anti-aging drug study. First time in history that a drug was going to be studied to see if it could reverse or delay aging in people, but the problem was funding. No one ever thought the money would manifest. Well, guess what? In 2019, 
They raised the money and $40 million of that came from an anonymous donor. That's a very intelligent, wealthy person, by the way, to put 40 million of their dollars into a study to make sure that the metformin that we're all taking for the most part, is it really going to extend healthy lifespan? We'll know in the next three to five years, but the great news is wealthy people are writing checks, are supporting research. And this was a major, major milestone to have that happen. Now, one week after RADFEST concluded in the proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, a major, major study came out on fruit flies. But they combined three interventions, rapamycin plus lithium plus a drug most of you have never heard of called tramitinab. They put all three of these together and they were able to achieve a 48% lifespan extension. And just to let you know what that means, if they achieve even a 5 to 20% lifespan extension, they think that's really good. By 48, that's spectacular. And here's what they also identified. If they use just one of these interventions, one of these drugs, they were able to extend lifespan about 11%. Putting two of them together, they got a roughly 30% extension in lifespan. Putting all three combined, that's where they got the remarkable 48% extended lifespan in these fruit flies. And it goes to support the sequential order of age reversal interventions that we've been advocating for the last couple of years. And a lot of people who are tuned into this program or have joined the various age reversal groups, they're doing it. They're taking metformin to activate AMPK. They're using desatinib and coercitin to purge their body of senescent cells. They're aggressively boosting NAD, using rapamycin to induce autophagy and biologics, uh, gene therapies, all kinds of stem cell exosome therapies. People are doing this right now as we talk. Now, a study that we helped fund a number of years ago on the bowhead whale, uh, we wanted to sequence its genome because it happens to be the longest lived mammal we know of right now. It lives about 268 years. So we, along with the Methuselah Foundation, put up some money along with others to sequence the genome of the bowhead whale to figure out how could their genetic structure enable them to live so long and be resistant to so many diseases. And the good news is we've identified the genomic sequence of the bowhead whale. We've open, open sourced it so that any scientist can utilize that information to apply it to improving human health. And of course, the scientists that we're most enthused about, Dr. George Church at Harvard Medical School, the research he's doing with CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing technology. And the great news news is, going on right now, is he's getting coverage. He's getting favorable media coverage. Now, Washington Post, back in the end of 2015, introduced Dr. Jerks to the world, basically, indicating he had a cure for aging by year 2030. And the media continued to give Dr. Church some great coverage. Dr. George Church, the world leading geneticist at Harvard, is working to make humans immune to all viruses using CRISPR-Cas9 gene modification therapy. He helped pioneer mapping the human genome and editing DNA. His lab is working to make humans immune to all viruses, eliminate genetic diseases, and reverse the effects of aging. We have a strategy by which we can make any cell or any organism resistant to all viruses by changing the genetic code. So if you change that code enough, you now get something that's resistant to all viruses, including viruses you've never characterized before. I've been doing this now professionally since 1977. And for the first 30 years, people ridiculed it uh, for the fact that they thought it could never happen. They also questioned, why would you want it? Well, we got a nice endorsement there by Scott Pelley of 60 Minutes saying, we need age reversal. And then an update came out one month later about one of George Church's projects where he's going to use 45 independent gene therapies all at once to treat in a combined ways the degenerative diseases that occur in mice. And if that works, he's hoping to try that in people by year 2025. This is unprecedented speed at which the science is evolving. But the problem for a lot of us is, are we gonna be alive in 2025 or 2030? None of us really knows. But in the New England Journal of Medicine, December 26, 2019, an incredible review was done on the animal and human data showing the benefits of intermittent fasting. Now, at this year's RADFest, I'm going to do an elaborate presentation on how you can fast and do it in an easy way and benefit yourself in all these different ways and more. But if you haven't 
read this study in the New England Journal of Medicine. I've got a web link to it right at the bottom of the screen. You can read the story at your leisure and realize intermittent fasting is a potential way of you living many years longer to benefit from the CRISPR-Cas9 technologies that George Church is implementing. And just last week, Wall Street Journal published something that was just uh, one of these uh, hypotheses in which certain scientists, the leading scientists, are debating when will people start living to 100 years of age and beyond? Well, by the end of the century. Great news for people born in year 2000, 2005, but we need to accelerate this technology. But it's always nice to see experts who truly are experts as it relates to aging know that by the year 2100, lifespans of 100 years or more will be expected. They'll be commonplace. But this is why it's so important we accelerate research now. Michael Rose, possibly one of the most prominent scientists who does animal research to delay aging and even reverse it. And he's always been a little skeptical as to how long it would take for people to achieve this. And I guess to some extent he still is. But he's rather convinced 100 years from now, physicians will have the capacity to keep people alive indefinitely. We're that close to achieving indefinitely extended healthy lifespans, and we need to accelerate that more, of course. And these are the problems that we run into. People who have the money to rapidly fund lots and lots of studies, they're aging, they're getting sick, and you would think if you're dying of congestive heart failure and you've got $20 billion, you'd put a lot of money into aging research because if you can reverse aging, you can reverse heart failure. He's dead. $20 billion, someone else has that money. It's kind of ridiculous that more money is not being put into this cause. One of our objectives is to continue to raise funding to support this research. We don't have time to delay age reversal. Too many of our supporters just aren't around anymore. Uh, we started, by the way, our life exchange group in 1977. You can imagine some people were very healthy at age 50 and 60 in 1977. Well, they're not around anymore. So the dilemma that we face today is that we fund a research study. We've done it on NAD infusions. We've studied synolytics with like the, the satinib porcelain combinations. We're doing lots and lots of human research studying typically one pathway. But what we need to do is create a longevity network where we combine all of the pathways. So the solution to the current problem where we can extend lifespan a little bit, mitigate some diseases a little bit, is to create a cocktail of calorie restriction mimetics and a couple non-CR mimetics in a way that we can induce a significant impact on the diseases of aging and on the aging process itself. So our Vitality and Aging Research Group, we're seeking to merge all these pathways into practical <clears throat> longevity networks. And practical means what you can implement today to delay and reverse your aging process. These are the age reversal interventions that we can implement right now. We have the technology to do everything you're seeing on the screen right now. And that's what we plan to incorporate into our vitality and aging research initiatives. The first step, the longitudinal study. This is open to everybody. They can join this. They get initial blood work up done. And then we follow them forever, we hope. Our objective is to provide them with information that they can utilize to stave off aging, stay alive long enough until CRISPR-Cas9 technology that George Church and others are working on will enable them to live for an indefinite period of time. But what we're going to do is select out of the longitudinal people uh, those to participate in the interventions trial. And that's the one that's fully funded right now. We raised all the money we need to fund it. So the participants in the interventions trial get lots of diagnostics and they get lots of medications at no cost. We pay for everything. So what happened last year is we tried to raise over $500,000. Good news is we raised $682 thousand dollars for our vitality and aging intervention study uh, that funding came from our human age reversal project charity from myself and donations of physicians time lots of doctors and phds and research scientists they're donating time to make this study real it's fantastic so if you want to sign up for the vitality and aging longitudinal study you can do it online right now vitalityandaging.org you can see it right at the bottom of this slide but just to let you know what we're doing uh, we signed up at radfish 2019 and since over 400 people we're looking to sign up well over a thousand people which at the rate we're going which is going to happen and then we're going to follow them for at least 10 years though ideally indefinitely our goal is to never let anyone in the study 
die. That means we've got a, got a big job in our hands. If they start developing certain problems, we need to find a way to circumvent it. If you're part of this longevity uh, study, this longitudinal study, then we're going to help you. You're going to be go to, go to the top of the line, the front of the line, I should say, as relates to what we want to do. So what we're seeking is to capture robust data as to how effective these interventions aimed at delaying and reversing aging are really working. So we're putting together all kinds of statistical models so that every bit of data that's entered into our system is utilized. We can utilize it both with AI and with our group of people. We have a full-time staff right now that's overseeing this project. Many, many tests are gonna be done whether you're in the longitudinal study or on in the intervention trial, we're going to identify what your biological age is today and see how much we can reverse it with the different interventions we plan to employ. And these are technologies that are available right now. That's the fantastic news about it. We don't have to wait a long, long time. So we've expanded this, especially in light of the fact that people want to stay home at the current time. We've enhanced our ability to enroll people through electronic informed consent health questionnaires. So you can do a lot of this remotely right now, enroll in the study without even leaving your home. At least get into the project and know that you'll be getting updates via email. So this is pretty much what's involved in enrolling in the longitudinal study. You can look at this online uh, at that age dash reversal.net website and see what we're doing to accelerate this research right now. And the people who enroll in that longitudinal study, we're going to select 30 to 50 of them for the interventions trial. This is where we provide at no cost, lots and lots of visits to doctors, the ability to access medications, medications that some people can't even access right now. Of course, the diagnostic tests, medical visits, medications, all of that is fully funded. Now, just so everybody knows, the $682,000 that we raised, I haven't spent any of it. I'm funding all of this myself because what I committed when I asked for donations is I said, every penny you donate, will go to fund the research itself. It's not gonna to go to pay overhead or anything else. It will only fund the, the medications, it'll fund the diagnostic testing, and we expect now to let this study go for 12 to 15 or more months with the money we have, and we look forward to launching it just as soon as we can. So step one, for people who wanna get involved directly into age reversal research on a personal level, join the longitudinal study, and you get very deep discounted prices for everything. We're identifying low cost sources of the interventions around the world. Uh, we don't sell any of them, by the way, but we can tell you where to get them. And then the interventions trial will select from the longitudinal study. So it's going to be uh, something that I cannot wait to get up off the ground. This is where you can donate money to. The more money we have, the more interventions we can do. So step one, the longitudinal study that makes you eligible for the interventions trial. And these are the interventions that we intend to incorporate right away. And then we will add more. As we add more years and decades to the lifespan of the study participants, we'll have access to more and more interventions. I'm gonna conclude the billionaires, the ones who had a lot of money, dead. I can't imagine having $4.3 billion and not using that money to stay alive. And you may say, well, this individual is 78. He died of COVID. Well, had he funded some of our stem cell enhanced therapies that we were trying to raise money for four years ago, stem cell mobilized young blood from bone marrow of healthy young donors, we think we could have reversed immune senescence. This individual could have been alive today. He didn't put any money in like most people didn't. That study is going very slowly, by the way. But the idea is people with a lot of money aren't spending it. This individual, one of our founding members, he died at the young age of 99, and he motivates me almost every day I see his picture, and I realized he would have loved to have been around to gain access to these therapies. He died way too young. I need to work harder to make this a reality. The drug rapamycin, in addition to other drugs, comes up a lot with regard to age reversal. But what are its implications and effect in the treatment of COVID-19 patients? Can you speak to that? Yes, I can. A number of people have made comments, and I've seen people argue for the use of rapamycin and against it. 
Now, what I've been doing aggressively is intermittent fasting. I go pretty much 16 to 18 hours most days without eating anything. And sometimes I'll do a day or two complete fast in the week. And I'm, I'm mimicking some of the benefits of rapamycin by doing that. And so I'm not taking rapamycin myself because I'm doing such aggressive calorie restriction. But I can't argue against the people who are proponents of rapamycin and metformin and a number of other interventions to potentially boost immune function. But I think so much of it depends on the individual. If you are overeating, if you are overweight, I think you can benefit from the metformin, rapamycin, the other mTOR inhibitors. But if you're like me, I mean, I'm normal weight. Uh, some people say I'm real thin. I just have to be normal weight and I'm under eating. I don't think I need to rapamycin. And I'm doing a lot right now to boost my immune system, as you can imagine. Uh, so I don't have a definitive answer for that, but it maybe depends on the individual. If you are overweight and have a lot of comorbidities, such as diabetes, hypertension, all the problems that overweight people often suffer from, rapamycin might help you. Bill, does rapamycin make one more vulnerable to the coronavirus? Well, here's the issue. Rapamycin is going to turn down M. Tor. That's the mechanistic target of rapamycin. Now that theoretically could shut down some of your bone marrow function. That is a legitimate issue. But for a lot of people, they're overweight, they're consuming too many calories, they've got mTOR levels so high that that's impeding immune function also. There is a study in which rapamycin was given to elderly people and they produced a stronger antibody response. And that is so critical when it comes to the COVID virus. When it comes to COVID, uh, you want to produce antibodies. Older people don't do that very well. So rapamycin may be something good in that specific regard. That was only one study though. And we need a lot more research to validate what is really the best path to go forward with as it relates to rapamycin and COVID. Great. Is, uh, there's a question here about uh, synolytics, uh, the satin and quercetin protocol. Um, I guess I just sort of want to know what's the latest thinking on that. Well, the latest thinking on how often to use the desatinib coercitin protocol is probably to do it more often than what we recommended. We are always, we are always very conservative when we make a, a recommendation as to what someone can do. And we initially said maybe every nine to 12 months, you want to undergo a, a regimen of the desatinib and coercitin that's one dose week one and then the second dose week two. Maybe every six months, People may consider doing that. We know people doing it every three months. So we're probably under recommending uh, what we, what the optimal amount of a synolytic of activity that you want to induce in your body is. So currently we're suggesting people do it nine to 12 months. Once we get these studies up, it's going to be so spectacular. We'll be able to report in real time what kind of benefits we're getting when we start giving people doses of the satin and coercive them on a more frequent dosing schedule. Bill, the whole world has mobilized to respond to this coronavirus pandemic. What are your thoughts on this? I believe we have an unprecedented opportunity to transition the fear, real fear, and recognition of your mortality and morbidity risk. We've got an ability to package that as COVID starts to be cured or prevented. We can transition that energy into age reversal research because COVID-19 really the way it kills people is nothing more than super accelerated aging. I mean it's causing kidney failure, heart failure, dementia, all kinds of horrific problems even in people who are not put on ventilators. They're suffering horrific side effects and so we've got the whole world interested in staying alive. We plan to use that to motivate the world then to support aging research, make that the number one priority. Again, age-reversal.net. You can see all these slides on that presentation. And I want to thank everyone for their support of Life Extension that enables me to fund lots and lots of biomedical research in addition to the donations we received. Thank you very much.